Greetings, greetings, greetings. Back to nature, Africa. Back to nature, family. Back to nature, community. Welcome to another wonderful episode right here on our YouTube channel. Not necessarily my YouTube channel. It's the family, the community, the support network, our channel. It's another magnificent day here in the Garden of Paradise, ladies and gentlemen. And with that, we have a wonderful, wonderful uh, episode we'll be sharing here today as it is an update on a process that many of you got to observe right at the beginning uh, of the, when we had started this what we call miracle plant cycle so if you go look down either I'm not sure if it's left right up down where the other videos are here on our channel you'll see a video titled the uh, miracle plant uh, cycle and it is truly a miracle and we'll be talking about that here in a second but with that I like to say uh, we are always driven by a vision, mission, purpose, and here we say the closer we are to nature, the more whole, happy, at peace, at ease we are. The further we get away from nature, we get into a state of dis-ease. And so we want to say, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for those of you who have not yet liked, commented, shared, and subscribed, hitting the notification button, button, please go ahead and do that. And we want to say salute. Thank you all for your continued support, your continued uh, sharing uh, with us uh, in and, and following this particular journey. So with that, what we're going to have today here is an updated video. Now this interesting process of farming is always an evolution. A farm never remains exactly the same. Things are growing, things are dying, things are being planted. Thing, components are in seeds where it's dormant, but there's this whole beautiful, magnificent phenomenon that allows uh, all of us, you that are watching, myself, to eat every day. Without this magical process called farming, we would not be able to survive. And so documenting what goes on you know, sort of behind the scenes, uh, particularly for those who may not be in a rural setting or may not be in a farm setting or may not have a kitchen garden uh, and may shop only from grocery stores or supermarkets. Um, just getting a chance to observe the process of this miracle called you know, sort of how a plant goes through this life process. And it, it actually brings something to mind, and this might date me. I remember the first time that my mind was captured, fascinated by this magical miracle process. Uh, I was a little kid at the time. I wasn't in Africa back then, I was in America. And they used to have these uh, infomercials where uh, they had something called uh, a chia pet. Which is so funny now that we reflect on it. Uh, chia and chia seeds are superfoods uh, today, right? But at the time, you used to get this uh, small kit and it was like a, a small animal and it'll come with some seeds and you sort of spread the seeds on the animal and you put a little water and voila! In a couple of days, it has germinated, it has grown. And I remember as a kid, this was just fascinating to see that something can go from a little seed and with the combination of some water, a little sunlight, you know, some oxygen, it, it just miraculously grows, like almost like remote control or something along those lines. It was um, such a fascinating thing and I'd always been fascinated by agriculture and this process of how uh, a farm works, definitely, but every farm is comprised of a simple for, for, of, of uh, several um, components of simple plants. So when you see a simple plant go from a seed to a seedling and then to see it develop and to grow and then eventually produce food, uh, whether it's a fruit or vegetable uh, that you can harvest and then you go and uh, you can cook it, eat it, take it to the market sale, it's such a Magical process, and I just want to say I'm very privileged to um, partake in this, uh, you know, uh, process and be involved with this sort of mir miracle process. 
um, process uh, and phenomenon uh, engaging here in organic farming and particularly when you're able to do it uh, you know from an African context in a natural holistic organic perspective it's uh, such a blessing and so I want to give thanks and I, I want to thank you guys also for tuning in and hopefully the window that you're getting to see into some of the things we're doing here in Back to Nature also bring a greater uh, enlightenment uh, and empowerment into your own life because um, when you get sort of uh, closer to this thing called uh, you know nature and, and, and nature from this perspective of a farm and growing is something that is sort of a triggered or uh, magnetized within us and I, I believe the essence of that is we are made up of the natural elements so our you know flesh bones is sort of the soil um, that's why they say dust to dust right soil to soil our blood is sort of the liquid uh, right the temperature of our body we all need to maintain a certain uh, sort of uh a temperature state that keeps us alive and that's the fire the energy and we all of course need to breathe and so when you're looking and seeing nature as we're going to be updating here today uh, and I believe one of the things that is so magnetic about it we see a reflection of ourselves and in such a very fake world in such a very artificial world um, getting a chance to visually see nature then eventually get into you know touching it, it's a reassuring it's a, a sort of a grounding um, you know brings us back into something that is uh, real or reality that was here before we got here and here it's going to be here long after we're gone no human being went and created soil air water in a laboratory and you know these were elements that are here and fundamental to all life and so just being able to observe it and to be aware of it and conscious of it is truly a blessing and it allows um, to, to bring a greater peace, uh, serenity into one's life and actually a, a certain sense of bliss. So with that ladies and gentlemen, you may, be rem you may remember a few videos ago standing in probably this exact location you may see if we see the road, even though I'll be picking up the camera here in a second. We started the process, the miracle plant process, and you can go a couple videos down and see uh, where we, we initiated this particular uh, bed that we're on. You know our farm has two phases uh, to it, and on the, each, each of the phases we have different blocks. And we are here now in phase one, block B. And in phase one, block B, we planted about 13 to 15 beds of capsicums, what some will call a bell green peppers others will call like we call them here in kenya hohos and so with that we're going to get an update uh, on where uh, they have come to the actual going through the process of growing and flowering and we'll be able to see some of the actual fruits and fruits have seeds and so these bell green, green bell peppers uh, are our fruits in that regards and we'll have a chance to take a look at that and uh, how how that in a sense manifests so let me pick up the camera here and have a chance to move forward into this section of the farm we've been very fortunate actually and we've started to harvest uh, a number of them already and you'll have a chance to let me actually peep here see if the camera can catch it I'm not sure if the light how the lighting is but you'll be able to see the different uh, capsicum the different uh, bell peppers that are growing uh, you'll be able to see these hohos as we call them here and you see here we have about I think we did about 10 beds here and you if you go back to a few videos and you remember when we were just transplanting them from the seedling uh, bed and we brought them over uh, in a way that we could then have a chance to uh, put them here and we said that we would document this process and so with that you're able to see as we the leaves sometimes might hide them a little bit but there you go the green pepper bell peppers as they're developing and as they're growing looking very beautiful very delicious very scrumptious and so this is the section 
uh, that we had wanted to give an update on with what was going on with our hohos, our green peppers, our capsicums as they were developing out in this section of the farm. Once again, we're in phase A, I mean phase one, block B, you see the gate there. Many of you are aware of our tower there. You might have seen us shooting for the goat, the baby goat we finally gave a name to right in that section. So just becoming familiarized with our farm. And by the way, we did put some corn, some maize here as borders. Uh, and we'll be addressing sort of why we found that that system sort of works in an interesting way uh, here moving forward. So once again, you have a chance to see the wonderful, beautiful fruits and how they grow and how they develop. And uh, we're growing here in an open, um, uh, an open field um, way. And that'll be our brief update here on our Capsicums. It's moving in the farm. It's always evolving, growing. You might have remembered that we had a wonderful, beautiful, um, uh, here about 13 beds of tomatoes, nyanyas, and you, we've been harvesting them here now for probably the last four to six weeks. And with that, they're giving us now our sort of second and uh, moving into like a third harvest on some uh, but you'll sort of see that they're coming towards the end of their life cycle here but they are still producing a few of our tomatoes which we'll be harvesting and then we'll be clearing this particular section of the farm and you'll have opportunity to see how it will be re replicated you remember here we had our garlic we had our ginger in this particular uh section and here the crop rotation we're now putting what we'll call you know the spinach um and other green leafy cruciferous vegetables in this particular area of the farm uh front gate uh, phase one block a block b block c and here block D excuse the handwriting but uh, yes it has a chance to in a sense show so the last update I'll go in, in that I wanted to mention for today is in a section that uh, once again a couple of videos ago you might have remembered we were showing a part of the uh, farm where we had used banana leaves to cover up small uh, tomato seedlings. Now, you can go back exactly in the video and see when we posted that. And in just a few weeks of those banana covering, they were covering to uh, conserve some moisture um, in here, you can now have a chance to see what has been able to develop from those seedlings that were in this section of the farm. Isn't the magic and miracle of nature phenomenal? This process of growing, this process, the miracle process of how a plant grows from a seed and how it's able to develop and then this is how we get food, ladies and gentlemen. It is just simply, simply amazing. And now here we have the young tomatoes that are growing. And, um, and with that, by the way, I saw a beautiful bumblebee there. It's very important. Bees, uh, the right kind of insects and the right balance on a farm is very important. But I just ask you all to go back uh, to the video uh, a few weeks ago where we I think in the title of the video you see a small tomato icon or emoji and you'll see how we started very small and how this miracle of life happens and that's what you had for breakfast hopefully it was more so it's something organic uh, or, or not too artificial um, but this is how your breakfast, your lunch, and dinner 
is produced right through this process called farming by the way you might see all these wooden things we've put up here some contraptions to allow a trellis uh, you see the blue strings we've used to allow the vines of the tomatoes to grow uh, and to develop in that regards and you'll see the young tomatoes now coming out uh, in this particular section of the farm and so i just wanted to have a chance to update and for this video here today um, by the way, some of them are just doing really magnificently in that regard. And just all the tomatoes that are coming out is just truly a magical process. And no matter how many times that I go through this process and we uh, get a chance to engage different... Uh, hey, what's up guys? By the way, those are our chickens. Our little chicken in here um, but <laughs> this is the focus we are on here for today um, yeah it's uh, always amazing and it never ceases to amaze me in a sense to how this process of life this phenomenon of life happens and that we should not take it for granted um, that we should appreciate the gifts that we are given to exist, to be here. And life is not just something that is mundane. And when we take time to reflect uh, on really the miracle of life. Oh, by the way, guys, those of you might may remember, we did the video here on where our borehole is, going 250 meters all the way down. That's that section. But yeah, when we take time to reflect on the miracle which is life we realize that this is not something that is just yeah here today gone tomorrow but this is something to be marveled at and to be grateful for and to be humbled uh, in a sense that we have an opportunity to participate in this miracle called life. Because just as these particular plants, tomato uh, plants, have gone from small seedlings, we ourselves also um, went through this process where we were a small sperm, eventually we met an egg, and that egg I eventually moved forward and uh, you know nine months and boom we're born and we develop but life is always growing life is always moving life is always transforming and let us live this life in a magical way and, and acknowledge the truly divine process that we get an opportunity to participate in and when we have that perspective of life ladies and gentlemen that perspective um, then allows us to manage our mental psychological emotional state much better when we have what we'll call an attitude of gratitude because we realize that we are on a piece of mud ball floating thousands of miles uh, in space around the sun called this mud ball is called earth and this life of ours is a gift I think that's why they say uh, be in the present right because life itself is like a present like a gift and so uh, I hope you have an opportunity from seeing an update uh, of our video here today and what you see behind us here to um, see a little bit of the behind the scenes of what goes into uh, farming uh, and being able to produce food in a healthy way and it's very important to have what we'll call food sovereignty to be sovereign in terms of being able to produce our own food and we're going through some very interesting times in the world here today and it's very important that we learn uh, that's why we always advocate even if it's just a small kitchen or garden um, just learn how to 
And by the way, it's actually not that difficult. Get a little soil. For those of you who are maybe not in Africa or uh, say in other parts of the world or run to your Home Depot or your Lowe's, you know, buy a $20 bag of, um, you know, some so organic soil, uh, $10, $15 plant pot, you know, then go to the seed section. You'll find some interesting seeds. You can get some heirloom organic untreated seeds and take it home and just start the process germinate it doesn't matter trial and error you can learn along the way you found us here on youtube there's so many others on youtube that you can be able to find and learn from and eventually we'll be getting a little bit more also scientific in terms of germination the seedling process etc but just watch it and especially for your children if you have children um, let them get amazed the way I was when I was a young man and had the opportunity to first uh, see how the chia pet I don't know if they're still selling that you might find them on Amazon or something along those lines it's a wonderful thing because when a child sees almost like magic happening from a, a seed and it germinates uh, it'll be something that will transform that child's life it expands their consciousness it makes them more aware of um, the gift of life they're able to, to have so it's not just putting them in front of the TV or playing the video games and you know eating the fake cereals and everything no maybe grow one tomato and actually grow it from a seed to harvest and taste it and eat it and a child uh, and even if you're, you don't have children but the inner child in you will also celebrate and will be amazed and feel a certain sense of accomplishment wow I planted this seed I saw it grow from a small seedling like you guys saw here uh, when we were, we had uh, uh, planted these initially and I saw how that small seed first started to show these small little tomatoes growing and then I eventually was able to harvest them and eat it and I'm telling you it makes you feel like a million dollars just being able to participate and knowing that hey if all worse came to worse uh, and all you know as they say all things fall down right <laughs> but if it ever came the day that you needed to grow your own food that ability to be self-sufficient and self-sustainable is something that uh, you'll always cherish. And so with that, I want to thank you very all for continue thank you all very much for continuing to support our journey, for continuing to tune in, for continuing to be receptive towards this message of getting closer to nature. And so once again, we implore you, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. Uh, comment, like, share. We love always your interactions uh, with this particular channel. And with that, uh, keep your head up. Stay strong, particularly through these very trying times that we're living through. Uh, God bless each and every one of you. And remember, take one step towards nature. Nature takes 10 steps towards you. God bless. Peace.